If you're on the hunt for a new pair of skis, then you've come to the right place. Making that perfect choice can seem like a daunting task, and the burning question on every skier's mind during the buying process is, what ski width should I buy? Width is perhaps one of the most significant decisions you'll make when investing in a new set of skis. The underfoot or waist width of a ski tells a compelling story about its performance and the type of skiing it's designed for. If your skis are too wide or too narrow for your preferred style of skiing, you'll find yourself restricted when charging down your favourite terrain. Before we start exploring the various types of skis, you should ask yourself two important questions. The first is, what type of skier are you? Are you a beginner, intermediate or advanced skier? Because depending on which type of skier you are, the width of your skis will definitely impact your experience. Secondly, where are you going to ski? Will you stick to groomed slopes, or do you plan to explore deep powder, navigate icy terrain, or tackle a mix of different conditions? Keep these questions in mind, as they'll help determine the ideal width for your skis. In the end, it's up to you to choose the perfect ski for you. In the video description below, you'll find links to our favourite skis and gear. Before we begin, let's clarify what ski width means. Ski width, also known as the waist or underfoot size, is simply the width of the ski at its middle point, from one edge to the other. The waist is the narrowest part of the ski. In simple terms, if a ski is wider at the waist, it will have a larger turning radius and perform better in deep powder snow. Conversely, if the waist is narrower, the ski will have a shorter turning radius and excel on groomed slopes. Now, the turning radius and performance are also influenced by both its length and its side cut. The side cut refers to the hourglass-like tapering of the ski, with variations in width at the tip, middle and tail. Skis with a deeper side cut, and therefore small waists, offer agility and the ability to make quick, short turns, but may be less stable at high speeds. Skis with a shallower side cut, therefore larger waists, tend to naturally make larger turns but provide more stability when you pick up speed. Now that we've established that, let's take a look at the on-piste carving ski which has the narrowest waist width ranging from 64 to 82 millimeters. If you absolutely enjoy zooming down well-groomed slopes and crave the thrill of making precise turns, then you should definitely consider getting yourself a carving-specific ski. Carving skis are tailored for this exact purpose. They have a narrow waist width, are stiff, and come with a noticeable side cut, which means they have an hourglass-like shape. This small waist and side cut make carving skis exceptional for swiftly and confidently switching between turns while maintaining a strong grip on hard-packed snow. Depending on the size of their side cut, carving skis are perfect for both those long, sweeping turns and the snappy, shorter slalom-style turns. Carving skis come in various ranges, catering to both beginners and more experienced skiers. Beginner models have slightly wider waists and more flexibility, which makes turning easier and provides a sense of security. However, it's important to remember that the narrow waist that works wonders on packed snow can pose a challenge when trying to navigate deep powder. Let's move on to the all-mountain ski. All-mountain skis are the go-to choice for recreational skiers who want a versatile ski that can handle various conditions. These skis typically have a waist width ranging from 84 to 95 mm. Most modern all-mountain skis also feature some rocker technology, which makes them suitable for both on-piste and off-piste skiing. Rocker describes the ski's upward bend away from the snow. They usually have a decent turning radius, making them perfect for leisurely cruising or aggressive shredding. The all-mountain ski category will often be the go-to choice for a lot of people. No matter what the weather throws your way on a typical day at your local resort, all-mountain skis are designed to provide a great skiing experience. Moving on to our third category, and that's the all-mountain freeride ski, which falls between the measurement of 95 to 110 millimeters. If you're a fan of skiing through deep powder and exploring challenging terrain while seeking out natural jumps, then you should consider getting yourself a pair of freeride skis. All-mountain freeride skis are wider than the typical all-mountain skis, usually with a waist width ranging from 95 to 110 millimeters. They're designed to be flexible in the front and have large rockers, this combination of a wide waist and ample rocker helps you effortlessly float on powdery snow all day long. Moreover, they help distribute your weight and reduce the risk of injuring your ACL when you take on those massive cliff drops. Freeride skis often offer great maneuverability, making it easy to handle bumps and diverse terrain while still providing stable control when shredding through narrow mountain couloirs. However, it's worth noting that all mountain freeride skis may not perform as well on hard-packed snow. 
although advancements in technology are improving their performance on rough and groomed terrain. Lastly, we have the powder ski, with some serious measurements of 110 to 130 millimeters. For those epic powder days on the mountain, you need a pair of big, wide skis designed for tackling deep powder. Powder skis typically have a waist width larger than 110 millimeters, and some of them are exceptionally wide, with waist widths exceeding 130 millimeters. All powder skis incorporate some form of rocker technology, and some even feature zero or reverse camber, similar to water skis. These skis are purpose-built for navigating through deep powder, and thanks to advancements in technology, they're not as limited on challenging conditions as they once were. While they might not feel as great on hard-packed snow, they can still handle it until the next massive snowfall arrives. This shouldn't be your one and only ski, and generally people have powder skis as a second ski for those heavy powder days. These categories often overlap, so you must figure out where do you actually ski, what type of skier are you, and what do you truly seek in your skis when making a purchase decision? That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the video and feel free to comment any questions you might have. If you want to see future videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel.